Welcome back. We're still uh, on to the special town hall session on the off-season elections. Uh, we just got done now talking about the Imo State election, the build-up, what to expect and uh, what uh, we could be seeing tomorrow, November 11, 2023, as one of the elections that will be taking place alongside Bayosa and Kogi State. Now we will delve into Kogi State proper. Uh, this is the North Central election that we'll be holding uh, tomorrow. So I guess uh, we'll take it the uh, opposite direction. I'll start from uh, Mr. Joseph here. Uh, there have been issues with um, or reports of violence in um, uh, Kogi State. Uh, just uh, about two, three days ago, the SDP candidate alleged um, an assassination attempt on his life. Uh, Weeks prior to that, the current governor, the incumbent governor, um, was said to have done the same, but he, he refuted it that no such thing happened. But then we know earlier in the campaign cycle, he did make analogies with a lion, and if a lion is stepped on, you know, uh, you know and, and all of that. So we, we've been hearing these reports back and forth. Uh, how do you think this can be remedied? We have um, uh, 40,000 police officers deployed to Kogi. Is that enough? Uh, well, I think 40,000 should do the job. Mm. You know, that's, that's a little bit, you know, um, okay. And yes, um, Kogi is a vibrant democracy. Mm. They have a very vibrant um, um, group of people, youths um, there. And one of, the, one of the things that is quite interesting in Kogi State are the political actors in Kogi State. These mm. are people who are... I would say young, mm -hmm. you know, they, they understand what um, democracy should be. They understand what the stakes are currently. And um, you would expect that, I, I, I don't want to play the devil's advocate here or side anybody, but you would expect to a large extent more to be done in terms of rhetoric. The rhetoric that have been coming out from Kogi State this past few months have been quite violent, has been quite um, 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 strong. Strong words have been used and um, different threats have been made and um, different allegations of assassination or assassination attempts being made. And um, I, would, I, would be, I would want to believe that 40,000 police officers currently in Kogi State um, charged with the responsibility of keeping the peace during the election will do the job or get the job done. But having said that, I would also want to see a situation where even the political players can tone down the rhetoric, mm. tone down the rhetoric of hate, of anger, of, of violence, mm. because this rhetoric can easily translate into the um, um, polling units where you, um, a particular um, polling unit may be targeted or a particular ward may be targeted because oh, uh, they believe it will favor this person or this candidate is going to mm. um, get the most votes from this polling unit. Mm. And we don't want to see that in our elections. You know, as um, observers of elections, we want to see a situation where people are not afraid to go to uh, 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 polling units and uh, perform their civic duties. Mm. We've also um, recently, I was um, listening to um, um, a speech made by um, the presidential, um, the PDP gubernatorial candidate, and I was, I was. I All right, just a moment, then, please. Let's um, hear from Hello. our correspondent in Kogi State, Mavis. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Mavis? Hello, Hello can you hear us? I think we'll Hello? have to call her back. Can you hear us now? Hello? I can't hear you guys. You can call me again. Okay, I'll call you back. Hello? All right, uh, you were saying? So I was saying, you know, I, I, I expected that to a large extent he would, he would, his tone, his rhetoric against uh, the um, current governor, the incumbent governor, would be a little bit um, mild. Jump I understand right. that the atmosphere is charged, is tense, mm. but um, like like um, somebody I was speaking with recently said, you know, the power of incumbency would definitely play a very huge role in mm. in Kogi State election. Mm. I, I know it's it's. I'm not I'm not saying the incumbent. I'm not predicting anything. I'm not mm. saying the incumbent will win, but with the rhetoric he has made, with the things he has been saying. What are you speaking about now? Uh, the, um, current governor okay. of um, Kogi State, with what he has been saying, you know, it looks like um, the power of incumbency will play a little bit of um, um, back and forth in the Kogi State election. Right. But we want to see a level of transparency and a level of tranquility during the election. All right. Um, the, the Kogi State governor actually um, recently 
called for serious investigation. He spoke to the IG on the violence ongoing and um, he took a hard stance on forestalling these issues ahead of um, tomorrow. Uh, Mavis, can you hear us now? Yes. All right. Um, how are you doing? All right, good afternoon. How, how is Kogi State? Um, I think um, from our observation around the um, local jar, around the um, Okene and around Kogi environment, I think um, they are well prepared because um, when we are coming, <coughs> we saw the massive, I think we saw about eight police deployed, there are no security agencies in Kogi State as we speak. We have different security agencies here we have police, we have the military, we have civil defense, we have customs. Every at almost every checkpoint, when you're going trying to go to a local government, you have um, the army checking you to see if um, I think they're all doing this just to second, ensure and to keep the promise that it makes the people that the election is safe for them to come out and exercise their franchise. All right, uh, that's fair enough. What about INEC? Uh, what would you say about preparedness in that aspect? Have you been uh, or, or I'm aware that um, you had a briefing by some INEC officials. What was the message there? Yes. Um, before the briefing, INEC officials at yesterday sent out materials to different um, centers, different coding. They have sent out materials, even as far as, you know, at most times there are some polling units that um, the distance is very far and makes the election probably they won't be able to start early. But here in Cookie State, they ensured that those sensitive materials have been, they have been distributed. As at the time we're talking right now, INEC has distributed all sensitive materials to all officials. Mm. Everyone who is to partake in the election, everything has been distributed to them. So for now, INEC is ready. INEC is seen. When the INEC is seen, INEC is seen ready. Um, security agencies are also seen ready for the election. So we are all waiting for the election to keep back tomorrow. According to the INEC official, he said what they want to do is that they want to ensure that INEC officials are on ground waiting for the people even before the third time of the election. They assured us that they are prepared. So tomorrow we'll find out if they are really, really prepared as we say All right. Um, you've spoken about the... Um uh, persons who should be neutral to security and INEC. Uh, do you have any words that uh, perhaps if you've witnessed or spotted political actors, because they are the ones who do the most of the accusations against themselves uh, and so on and so forth. So have you witnessed, um, you know, political actors also, you know, perhaps ramping up last minute support or just, um, you know, staying at the, uh, at the sidelines and waiting to see what happens? Sorry, can you come again? I didn't get you. Sorry. I was asking about your obser your observation, if any, about political actors. Uh, have they gone silent as the D Day approaches, or uh, are they still, you know, you know, making some noise? Actually, I haven't I haven't seen any noise. But um, if you say you describe noise as um, press conferences, yes, they've a they've actually been having um, press conference from one political. Um, party to another. Mm. We've been having press conferences, but I haven't seen anything that um, should raise eyebrows for now. But they've been having press conferences from one, like, I think in some minutes we were supposed to have a press conference at the government house, which was cancelled for some reasons that they didn't really tell us. They didn't, they didn't speak to us. But um, <laughs> we heard or we saw the governor actually heading to the state house, and then he's going to head back to where he's supposed to be local government, where mm. he's supposed to cast his vote tomorrow. But mm. outside that, we haven't seen anything that will raise any eyebrows for now. All right. I can just say, it's, um, it's fair to say that um, everybody is ready. Even the electorate seem ready. Mm. They seem ready. And there was something I next said when it was briefing, because questions were asked um, as to what they were going to do to political offenders, to their INEC officials, if they happen to... Um, violate the electoral process, maybe through maybe over voting or trying to buy cell phones. And um, the INEC official clearly stated that all political, all electoral offenders will be severely punished. So we're actually looking forward to that and we hope that we'll keep up the 
that. I think that, um, I think they spoke about, uh, yeah, I said vote buying. They said they are doing all they can to stop the vote buying. But they said that it is not just something that INEC alone can do. That they expect the citizens, also the electorate, to know that they are not supposed to sell their vote. So they, they, they also put a ban on anyone coming with his or her phone to the polling unit. All right. So that's what that much that INEC has done for now. All right, thank you so much, Mavis. Um, stay safe out there. We'll be calling you for more updates. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, uh, that's the update from Kogi State uh, as we speak. So, uh, Madam Thomason, uh, back to you now. Uh, I'd like you to speak on the issue of vote buying. You know, that's a, mm. a topic that we can't um, run away from. In the last election cycle, it was, at, or it, uh, there were attempts to sort of forestall it with the Naira redesign, which turned out to be something else. Uh, but the, the idea then was that people would be reluctant to, to sell votes for old currency. And now CBN has said uh, old currency is legal tender. Anything goes. So there is no, there is no fear for those who want to buy votes and those who want to sell. So what do you, how do you see that um, um, playing into uh, this issue? And if you can also uh, quickly touch on the issue of zoning, if you believe it will have any effect in this election. All right, thank you again, and uh, well done to Mavis. I am a journalist as well, and trust me, it would take a lot for me to go to Kogi to cover an election. Mm -hmm. So I know she's doing a very big mm -hmm. job right now, mm -hmm. and I keep my fingers crossed that Kogi will be safe mm -hmm. for everybody. You see, this election that we're having tomorrow, I, I really would have said we should, should maybe do it on different days, because it's like taking three different elephants mm. on at the same time as one small small and i like it's like a very small small animal mm. Mm? compared to the fact that they are now waging war against kogi bayosa and imo mm. of the three the two with the highest record of election violence kogi and bayosa it will take a miracle and a total mind shift for the people to totally renounce election violence. I mean, it would take the political actors coming out. So if they're doing anything right now, that's what they, I expect them to be doing. Coming out, say, you're my supporter, don't fight, don't mm. carry gun, don't do this, don't do that. Because how do they get those, um, those uh, barricades are always there. They've always been there. It's not the first time. But it was in Kogi, mm. this last election um, in 2019, that saw election not taking place in certain areas at all. It was in the same Kogi that uh, a particular road was broken altogether. Yeah. And they could not access the area because there was no road. So, so much happened in Kogi every time an election is about to take place. The governor is not on the ballot but he has a candidate, his brother, from the same local government on the ballot. That is the local government that has the lowest local governments in Kogi State. I mean, that's the region. So you have the central, the east, the west. They're from the central with the lowest number of local governments <coughs> in Kogi State. Please hold that, hold that thought for just a moment. Let's see if we can finally hear from one of our callers. Um, hello, good afternoon. You're on to our town hall session on the off cycle elections. Hello, What's your good name? Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kobe State. My name is Usman Mohammed. All right, Usman Mohammed, it's good to have you. Please tell us what's Thank going on. Mm. Uh, right now, there is this school now in Kobe State. But the only problem that we have is the, the governor. How so? Uh, the government tried to oppose somebody that uh, the government don't want. And it's not on the ballot. How do you mean? Yes. So he is, he is the problem of policy. And he's from minority uh, area. Alright. So... Tomorrow, the focus should be in the east. So I want the security agency to do their job properly. 
in the east. Okay. That is where his problem lies. All right. Um, is that all? All right. Thank you so much for calling and contributing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, he has um. That's a cherry news. Is what? Is it not cherry? Cherry. He's, he's saying that there could be problem in Kobe East. So, uh, well, <laughs> you know, these are this, yes. we, we ask them um, the security operatives to you know do their job, carry out analysis and reports. Oh my! That's a yeah, that, that's a citizen's own um, uh, security. Uh, assessment or risk assessment, and he has spotted <laughs> Kogi East. All right, just one more concern. Sorry, uh, Elder sorry, Zion sorry, is coming okay. now. Let's hear from Elder Zion. All right, uh, good afternoon, Elder Zion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Amadi. Good afternoon, sir. God bless you. Long time. Yes, sir. It's been a while. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I see Mr. Amadi. Yeah. In a clear dance, if anybody can believe by the election that Mamma Yakubu will preside over with the free and fair and transparent, that person is living in a food paradise. Every promise he made, as far as his trust building, is still in Nigeria. In the last general election, none of them was met. In fact, in other plans, Yakub was supposed to be in prison by now. But he did not even apologize to Nigeria. He deliberately did what he did to put us in a state of suffering, of difficulties, of hunger. We are going through now in Nigeria. So to tell you the truth, Kogi State Governor is coming back. He was State Governor is coming back. Bayasa State Governor is coming back. Why do we leave Bayasa? They know that Bayasa, Bayasa is very, very full, full and time. If you talk to their governor, give it to what he did. And they to add that, that the former president Jonathan has come to support the man. And you know, Jonathan is somehow in friendship with the president. That is the only reason why they believe that. That in Igbo, Igbo state people, they have found that Congress, God's on side, they are going to remove this government, but he, they cannot. Right. The police is another political party on the side of the federal government. So we are only, it's only wishful thinking. And otherwise, something different will happen. Right. Yakubu can never, can never preside over a faith and a transparent election. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Elder Zion. Thank you for calling in. All right. Uh, because of time, if you can just round up so that we can get from... Okay, so I'm um, going to the zoning thing, which um, the guests... Uh, I, I wouldn't want to say that I support them or I do not support mm -hmm. uh, the man who called from Kogi earlier. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is Kogi people would decide tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, the West has not produced at all. The East has ruled. The West, none at all. Central, eight years. And the Central is looking at, you know, continuing they are rolling straight. I, I, I wish them all the best, really. Mm. But for me, the most important thing that everyone should be looking at tomorrow in Kogi is security. Security, the last election, somebody was killed. Remember, it was the PDP woman leader mm. of the election who was, I think, well, may God rest her soul, a true, a true bow or something. Mm. Um, 
this time around, you know, somebody else has been killed mm. in this last election, and uh, which they say is from the ruling party, another woman. And that's where I have a problem because why are the women on the receiving end Correct. of all of this volatility? Mm. You, you, you know, there is violence, and the women are seem to be the ones who are singing, the ones who are singing for you, who you should be the who should be protected the most are the ones who are scapegoats. So the only person who has been declared dead during this election campaign process is a woman. All right. Uh, so, so that's a sad note to say. Really, but I, really, I the police should call. please go to that East Indo All because right. the uh, East is the where the bulk of the votes will come from. So. All right. Um, good afternoon. Now, uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, what? What's your name? Where are you calling from? All right, please. I think we might have to call back. The, we have network issue. Uh, because of time, I, I, um, Dr. Law, if you can quickly round up on Kogi so that we can very quickly touch on Biosa. We're almost out of time. Yeah, well, I can only add one thing. Okay. I believe in zoning. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if you don't entrench uh, zoning, either by law or by convention, mm -hmm. there are sections of the country that will never produce something. A local government chairman, a governor, president, and so on and so forth. I am from the southeast, so you can understand why I want uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. Southeast has only five states. If we have to leave it to uh, popularity of uh, the number of uh, convergence, uh, convergent uh, states, Saudis may never be able to produce uh, the president of Nigeria. So if there is zoning, you will discover that you will achieve one thing. One is that it goes around, and then uh, because of the tendency of uh, the incumbent to focus on his own area in terms of development, when he moves to the other side, there will be development in that area also. So within three election cycles, you will see that development has really moved around. All right. So these two factors are the reasons uh, why I support zoning. Right. And I want the co-guides to insist on zoning. All right. Um, Dr. Lo, let's just take one final um, call. <laughs> yes. Please, what's your name and where are you calling from? All right. Please, uh, Mr. Abufata, you have about 30 seconds. Go ahead. Mm. Alright. Yeah, that election uh, to me is going to the free and fair election if a security agent does not compromise mm. eh, All right. with uh, the peace and uh, tranquility uh, that goes along with uh, the election. So if our security uh, starts their duty the way it is expected of I think the election will tell me uh, those without any interruption. All right. Thank you, very much. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Uh, we have to go now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Abdul Let's um, quickly hear from our uh, Biosa team. But why uh, I'm placing the call, uh, Mr. Joseph, if we can get your thoughts on how you see the Biosa election proceeding. Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, the Biosa election, I, I believe this time around, won't be as violent as it used to be. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, this is me being optimistic, really. I'm hoping that um, what we've seen in previous times will, will not repeat itself. And one more thing I would, um, I expect to see in um, tomorrow's election is a little bit of increase in the voter turnout um, with everything that has happened um, in the February-March elections. You would expect that you know voters would want to see the the dynamics of politics in their states change. Well, right. I'm hoping uh, just a moment, uh, uh, Mr. Joseph. Um, Khalid, can you hear me? Hello, Amadin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you very much. All right. Um, okay. All right. Just for the sake of time, please uh, give us a quick summary of what's going on in Biosa, the security aspect, INEC aspect, and the general scenery. Yes, um, coming into Bayosa um, yesterday, uh, there was a, a heavy, um, an obvious 
heavy presence of security officials right from um, the gates of Bayosa down to the the INEC staff complex where we visited this morning. Mm -hmm. And there at the office, we were able to speak with um, the HOD of um, the HOD of education, voters' education and publicity, who made us understand that um, INEC has uh, put in actions into you know people collecting the PVC as well as you know talking about the, the security and he, he made mention that okay, he has been able to speak with security agencies and they are already on ground and they are already you know compared to different local government and different polling units where yeah. they already are they'll be working tomorrow and you know keep a, a transparent and fair um election process all right Thank you so much, um, Khalid. Uh, it's good to hear from you. Um, just stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll reach out one, uh, later and um, tomorrow and to hear more about what's going on in Bayosa. Thanks so much. Definitely. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I'm sorry I have to move over to uh, Madam Thomason now. Um, quickly, we, we, we're just out Bayosa. of time now. Your, your, your words on Bayosa. Bayosa, for me, is the only election I can predict tomorrow. Right. Um, but I, I can safely predict the results, not because I have any interest anyway. Mm -hmm. But the, for me, there are four th titans uh, mm -hmm. in tomorrow's election in Bayosa. You have Syriaka Dixon, former governor. You have Dio Yudiri, incumbent. You have the former president, President Gulok Jonathan. And you have the former minister of state, one-time governor of Bayosa State, Timmy Presilva, mm -hmm. who is on the ballot for APC. So you have... Whatever for me, three against one. So if Jonathan is supporting Duo Yediri, which didn't happen in the last election, mm. if he's supporting Duo Yediri for this election, then you can simply predict that that is where the election is all going right. to. All right, so I will see I just as wish Dr. there will be no violence. All I'm right. also keeping my fingers crossed. All right. By also, not a place I want to go yeah, to well, violence. By also, uh, uh, the only thing that has inspired a bit of confidence in me in oh. the Bayelsa election was um, uh, an interview I listened to uh, today. Um, one uh, Jonathan um, Lopobiri, right? Mm -hmm. He happens to be the president of a Joe Youth Council. Mm -hmm. The youth are working seriously to ensure that there is no violence. All right. That is the only hope. All right. Thank and you. I, play, I pray very hard mm -hmm. that they pull it through. All right, I thank pray you. for them. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Law. Thank you so thank much, you. Madam Thomason. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph. It's been a pleasure um, hearing from you uh, today. Uh, thank you so much to our callers. To, uh, we got a lot of calls we couldn't take. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow the elections are coming, and Captain Tim will be bringing you live coverage from 8 a.m. Join us for our live uh, telecast, a special live telecast, which will run for most of the day bringing you updates from the three states and uh, giving you all the analysis and breakdown of everything that is going on, how it's going on, and also bringing you collation uh, all the way to the announcement of the winners. Uh, thank you so much. It's been great um, uh, doing this. And uh, see you tomorrow once again for the live telecast. Bye for now. I am Amadine Obwemi.